Hello and welcome to the next in the series of videos produced by members of the King's Chambers Costs team uh, directed at assisting the profession in preparing for remote detailed assessment hearings. The focus of this short video will be the guidance note for uh, conduct of remote costs hearings which is currently hosted on the Association of Cost Lawyers website. Uh, details of that web address are in the notes below this video. This short video will focus on the preparation of bundles for remote cost hearing and in the protocol guidance note uh, they, those provisions start at paragraph 17. So starting at paragraph 17 I ought to reinforce that one should always pay most attention to any directions orders which are made by the court. This guidance note is no more than that and whilst it provides a platform which we think is useful uh, for the uh, conduct and preparation for remote detailed assessment hearings, the directions order or any order made by the court should always be given precedence. But to the extent that this doesn't contradict any guidance specifically given by the court, the uh, guidance note provides for three days before the detailed assessment taking place, three business days, a bundle of documents ought to be filed which comprises the following. Uh, first of all, an electronic copy of the bill. If that's an old uh, style uh, bill, then that should be in Microsoft Word format. And if it is an electronic bill, it will obviously already be in Microsoft Excel format. Um, the bundle should, should also comprise a copy of the points of disputes and reply in a single PDF document, uh, papers in support of the bill, which will be called an e-bundle, and Paul will talk about that shortly uh, and what goes into that. Uh, the electronic bundle should also comprise an offers bundle, um, which sets out all of the offers, uh, copies of all of the offers made in the detailed assessment proceedings, whether by way of part 46, part 36, I should say, or part 47. Uh, and finally, the details of the advocate. So email addresses, telephone numbers, and the capacity in which that advocate will be attending. Those documents um, ought to be filed uh, ordinarily by way of making them available on a data room and providing a link to the data room to the court. Um, another video will deal with data rooms. Um, I'll pass over to Paul now, who will talk about the contents of the electronic bundle. Um, the the e-bundle is crucial to a successful detailed assessment. It should be a single PDF file and it should include an index uh, with pagination uh, 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 throughout it. Uh, if possible, and hopefully you'll learn about this or if you've not already learned about it already, then we'll be addressing it in another video in due course. Use hyperlinks and bookmarks to enable um, the judge and parties to navigate and uh, easily access the bundle. That will make for a much smoother uh, and efficient hearing. The e-bundle should be organised in a manner which makes it um, easily accessible and easily navigable um, so that undue, uh, there's no uh, excessive time spent searching around for documents within it. Uh, the organisation should be, and this will be apparent from the index to the e-bundle and hopefully assisted by the hyperlinks and bookmarks, Skeleton arguments with authorities, uh, core case documents, which are as we would expect in a, an ordinary bundle in a paper bill, pre-action letter of claim, letter of response, statements of case, pleadings, uh, schedules of loss, court orders, disclosure, witness statements, which are relevant to the main action, and of course, disclosed experts reports. Uh, uh, there may remain an issue over undisclosed experts reports, and so they don't need to form part of the core case documents within the e-bundle. Obviously, in cases which are subject to a CMO, the precedent queues necessary and the receiving party's last approved cost budget. That, of course, doesn't supersede the existing guidance in relation to uh, uh, bill file, so bill filing and papers in support of the bill in 47 PD 13.12, which should still be prepared in the order um, that that practice direction provides for on the assumption that the court, the court will deal with the points of dispute in turn. You should try to agree the identity of the documents uh, that have just highlighted in subparagraphs A to uh, E above uh, with the other side, um, because one of the unusual features, um, but one of the more cooperative features of uh, remote costs hearings is that uh, at the same time as filing an e-bundle at court, you should file uh, on the paying party uh, an e-bundle, of course, without the privileged documentation. Uh, so those documents at 22F uh, that uh, uh, may or may not be excluded, depending upon uh, the parties, uh, uh, whether the party wishes to waive privilege in relation to any of them. So um, the pagination of the bundle, finally, should match the bundle that's produced for the court, obviously. Uh, it is something that uh, the parties need to make sure before the matter's filed at court. 
uh, 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 and that that's the uh, contents of the e-bundle. Um, it's worth bearing in mind when you are producing the e-bundle, if you are a receiving party, uh, that the only documents the court will have if uh, papers are being filed electronically or those which are filed. It seems like an obvious thing to say, um, but make sure in that subparagraph F that you include all of the documents that you intend to rely upon. It may be, for example, um, that uh, two items uh, in the bill, say two conferences with counsel, only the second conference is objected to. Um, don't fall into the trap of only producing in the electronic bundle the documents in support of the second challenged conference. It may well be that during the course of considering the reasonableness or otherwise of that second conference, the court wishes to consider what was discussed at the first. And so it's important to remember when putting together that bundle uh, that that bundle needs to include everything upon which you may wish to rely upon at a detailed assessment in precisely the same way you would if you were attending the hearing uh, in person rather than by a remote means. Um, it also follows from what Paul said about uh, pagination. It's crucially important in order to make these hearings uh, move swiftly uh, and without wasting too much time directing a judge around the bundle for the receiving party's advocate to have a good working knowledge of the pagination. It will require a little more preparation on the receiving party's advocate's part, um, but the receiving party's advocate will need to be uh, ready and able to direct the judge by reference to the page numbers of the e-bundle. Uh, to the documents relevant uh, to the item in dispute. And finally, another word back on that offers bundle we talked about at the beginning. Um, clearly, the judge ought not to see details of the offers that were made in the detailed assessment proceedings before the assessment has taken place. But what we don't want to happen uh, is there to be a large delay at the end of a detailed assessment hearing where people, uh, parties, scrabbling about to find details of offers and send them to the court if there's some form of dispute. So the offers bundle uh, we talked about earlier needs to be filed uh, in advance of the detailed assessment, but it should be password protected. And that password can be provided to the court at the conclusion of the detailed assessment, uh, should the court need to see details of any offers uh, if there is a dispute. So that's a, a brief review of the provisions in the guidance note that relate to uh, bundles. Uh, and you'll see in uh, other videos that we produce uh, how to put together the bundles themselves. Thank you very much.